Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, welcome back. Now, why did we do all this? Okay, why do we need even a generalized formulation for a given chemical reaction? Why can't we just write one reaction? The reason is that practical reactions, practical combustion, the mechanism by which a fuel reacts with oxygen and it goes to products, it does not happen in one step. Okay. If you consider this thing that is the combustion of hydrogen in oxygen, we all know what the product is. We know that the product is water, okay. but this does not happen in one step. Okay. This is the reason is that really this the collision of two molecules like this H2 and O2 can uh, cannot make a product. There has to be like very energetic intermediates which needs to be involved in this reaction mechanism which can lead to this which can which can basically carry the reaction forward okay h2 and o2 are like two molecules and as such they do not react among themselves to form the water all right so as you see for hydrogen oxygen combustion it involves 19 reversible reactions and eight species and of those 8 species of course, 2 are the 2 reactants and the product, the 3 are the reactants and the products H2O2 and water, but rest you see that lot of like intermediates being formed H atom, O atom, OH radical, HO2 radical, H2O2 radical. Okay. And this is the whole reaction scheme that is involved, not this part sorry. This is the uh, typically this is also involved, but this part. Okay, nineteen reactions and eight species. So that is why now this is for hydrogen oxygen, which you see the hydrogen is the simplest molecule possible, and oxygen is another reasonably simple molecule. So they are when they react, and I mean when when the combustion of these two things happen the number of reactions and species are not very large as such it is still controllable it is still manageable 8 and 19. But as I said before in say combustion of something like jet fuel which is the fuel of choice in aviation propulsion okay, or like things like JP7, JP8 which are the fuels of choice in, uh, in military engines the combustion of those are very very complex those can involve like even 5000 reactions. 5000 species and 25000 reactions 10000 species 50000 reactions okay so that is why now when you involved when your n goes to like 50000 you cannot write simple relations for this and therefore that you need this generalized description now you are in a position to handle as many reactions and as many species as possible but of course you still need some more information and this is the those extra information that is now since you have seen that only the number of species is not large, yes number of species can be large 8, but the number of reactions also can be large 19, as such the number of reactions are always greater than the number of species. So we can now have, we will use the variable k to represent the number of reactions. Okay. So, I and J if it is there these involved means Ith or Jth species and if K is involved it means Kth reaction. Okay. So, please remember this nomenclature. So, in this case you see nu i dash k means it is the 
stoichiometric coefficient of the ith species in the kth reaction m i is the species number k k f means the rate constant of the kth reaction in the forward mode and k k b means the reaction rate constant of the kth reaction in the backward mode and nu i k double dash double prime once again means that it is a stoichiometric coefficient of the ith species in the kth reaction on the product side ok. So, please keep this uh, convention in mind which will uh, simplify many things. So, we need this as I said that then because in the previous example our k essentially the number of reaction goes from 1, 2 up to capital K is essentially 19 whereas, i goes equal to 1 to 8. All right. So, this is the generalized expression of kth reaction rate. Now, please once again note the difference between reaction rate and reaction rate constant. This is the reaction rate constant k k f. Okay. Actually, it is not a constant, it is a function of temperature, but we represent uh, name it as reaction rate, uh, rate constant as such. And omega k is the reaction rate for the kth reaction, and i is the number of species, all right. Now, using that using this information and the uh, previous uh, relations, now we can find the rate of change of the ith species which is given by this thing omega i cap and that is should be now summed over all reactions. That is the contribution of the production or consumption of the species i should be taken taken from all reactions because species i can appear in many reactions it need not just appear in one reaction ok. So, we need to sum over all of them if they do not appear then of course, you see that uh, there these the stoichiometric coefficients will be 0. So, there will be no contribution as such, but if it non 0 then it means that there is a contribution and you need to take into account of that ok. So, this is the power of the generalized expressions. Now, you see here we were discussing 19 we are discussing about hydrogen oxygen uh, combustion it involves uh, 8 species and 19 reversible reactions. Now, if you know combustion or uh, you know that or if you have worked on mixing problems or uh, anything uh, similar for with multi component systems you know that we solve a given configuration using the governing equations right and where we solve for the momentum conservation where we solve mass conservation momentum conservation uh, energy conservation and also for species conservation. Now, when shell form or an in an integral form for each of this species i. So, if you are dealing with hydrogen oxygen uh, combustion you will be right or you can write 7 because uh, or some of the mass fractions or mole fractions will be 1, but anyway 7 or 8 as the your choice may be and uh, do a CFD involving hydrogen oxygen uh, combustion, but imagine you are doing it for kerosene right which involves thousands of species and thousands of reactions. I mean even with modern powerful computers it is like prohibitively expensive ok, you cannot manage we cannot manage to do that. So, what we do is that we introduce certain approximations based on comparison of the rates of certain reaction entities. Here reaction entity is a very generalized term based on the consumption of based on the it can be like a species involving a rate of change of a species or the rate of a reaction itself. Using that 
using certain approximation based on the comparisons of the rates of a certain reaction entities which can be species or reactions you introduce some approximations such that the number of these species and reactions involved can be reduced or they can be lumped together. How do you do that? You do that basically by using two approximation which are generalized generally known as QSS approximation that is a quasi steady state species approximation for a species. Okay. You apply please understand this thing here you apply the quasi species steady state species approximation for a species and you apply the partial equilibrium as some approximation PE for a reaction. Okay. You will see that applying one or both of these in a judicious manner you can reduce the number of reactions or the number of uh, or the number of uh, equations that needs to be solved and when you reduce that your computational load actually decreases. Okay. So, what is QSS species approximation? Now, you will see later that we will be talking about chain carriers. Chain carriers let us consider these to be now this intermediates like H, O, OH these intermediates are chain carriers. These are very energetic in nature and these are generated and consumed at very rapid rates. Okay. Please note this term that is they are generated and consumed at a very rapid rate such that their concentrations remain at low values. The concentration of this intermediate H, OH, O these are always very small in a combustion reaction in comparison to other like bulk species like H2O2, water etcetera. And also the net rate change the net change rates or the net rate of change of these species are also very small. Okay. But that does not mean that they are not important you cannot eliminate them. Okay. Please understand this difference you cannot say that I will not consider H O O H in my combustion calculation then you will get wrong answers all right. But you can introduce this kind of approximations on them in which you will consider that yes by noting that their concentration remains small you can consider that the rate of change of these species the rate of change of concentration of these species are small. What is the rate of change of concentration that is you know it is given by omega i here i stands for chain carrier like h o o h etcetera. This is equal to d c i d t and that is as you know this is comes from the production and this comes from the consumption let us say it like that. This is the rate of production of that species which adds to the concentration or adds to the rate of change of concentration and this is the rate of consumption of the species i which needs to reduce reduction of the rate of change of the concentration of the species i. Okay. Now, if the individual rates of these omega i plus uh, omega i cap plus and omega i cap minus are much larger that is the rate of production and rate of consumption. If these are much larger than the absolute rate of change of the species of the concentration of species i then we can approximate that these two things are equal. Okay. So, this is called then it means that the concentration of the species i does not change too much. So, what it means is that this is an ordinary differential equation whereas, this is an algebraic equation. So, even though it is implicit we have reduced the complexity of our problem by going from a differential equation to a algebraic equation. Okay. But it is very very important to note that this is true in this in this equation only. It does not mean that d c i d t is equal to 0 universally. Okay. d c i d t may not be 0 or may not be is not even is not 0 at all and it may not be negligible also when you compare it with other reaction rates other rates which can be reaction rate or which can be the species production rate. Okay. So, you have to be very careful about this it does not mean d c i d t equal to 0 it only means that it is small when you compare it with two other rates 
which are the rate of production and rate of consumption all right so this is this goes to the qss approximation and as you see here the most important hallmark of this is it is applied on a given species it is not applied on a reaction rate it is applied on a species rate of change of species concentration that is not changing too much in comparison to the rate of change of in comparison to its rate of production and rate of consumption what is partial equilibrium approximation now as you know in contrary to the previous one previous approximation which is applied on a species partial equilibrium approximation is applied on a reaction so that was applied on i j etc this is applied on k which is denotes the reaction okay so what does it state it states that so this is the net this is the total reaction rate so it states that if the forward and the backward reaction rates of a reaction k are much larger than the net reaction rate we can set this thing to be zero so omega k is given by k k f times product of i equal to 1 to n c i nu i to raised to the power of nu i dash k and k k b this is a backward reaction rate so this is a forward reaction rate uh, forward uh, rate of reaction this is a backward rate of reaction okay so the sum of these two when you have equilibrium of course this will be zero here we assume that that this guy is much greater than omega k and this guy is also much greater than omega k and as a result we say that in comparison to this this is almost equal to zero so it means that this reaction is in partial equilibrium all right so this is what is the consequence of this and once again you see that we go here from a algebraic uh, we can get an algebraic relation between the species concentrations in this form once again this means that it does not mean that omega k is necessarily small compared to any given rate of change of species concentration or any other reaction rate okay it is only applied in this particular context example this is a generic example we will actually come to actual examples when we use this qss approximation and the partial equilibrium approximation very soon now let's say that the first reaction for k equal to 1 is in partial equilibrium and then we solve for the concentration of the species 1 c1 uh, in terms of ci okay now since omega k equal to 1 is not necessarily small when compared to omega i it needs to be kept in this equation in the equation of omega i cap which is the rate of change of the concentration of species i okay and that is given by so we can split it up split up the contribution from the first uh, reaction and all other reaction so omega i is essentially it it has contributions from the first reactions and it has contribution from all other reactions and then we can what we can do is that for i equal to we can write uh, we can put i equal to 1 here and we can again get the contribution for omega 1 and the contribution for all other reactions but this is only for species i and then we can basically substitute this here this actually we can uh, uh, subtract these two things and when we subtract we see that we have a dc i dt is given by this form and we need to now our we need to only consider for i is equal to 2 to n okay so the we can have been we have been able to eliminate omega 1 all right that is we have been able to eliminate the reaction rate of omega 1 of the first reaction and we can only consider uh, now from species from 2 to n so the number of equations have reduced from n to n minus 1 so clearly we see that this applic application of this uh, thing has reduced it uh, 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 from uh, uh, um, 2 to uh, n to n minus 1 now what actually it is done is that in in reality 
what uh, what is done is uh, we have uh, we successively apply QSS approximation and partial accurate approximation and if you continue to apply this thing we can arrive at a one step global reaction at least theoretically. But then the process is tedious and the results depend on the individual reaction rate parameters most of which are not known. So, uh, yeah we then it becomes something like this the fuel and oxidizer goes to products and this is given by this and uh, we can arrive at a uh, global approximate uh, semi global reaction. Now, this is of, of course comes at a penalty that you lose the fidelity or the lose the detailed nature of your reactions and but uh, sometimes that is also required when you want to do a uh, an approximate calculation or when the reaction rate kinetics is you know that it is not very important because of certain external parameters all right. So, now we will go with certain definitions uh, which are essentially the reaction order and molecularity. What is molecularity? Molecularity is the number of colliding molecules in an elementary reaction ok. It is the number of colliding molecules in an elementary reaction as you see that if you consider the reaction like H plus O2 going to OH plus O. So, the number of in molecules involves H and O2 o essentially ok. So, the molecularity is essentially 2. So, whereas here we define that the nu i dash is the reaction molecularity with respect to species i. Whereas, summation i equal to 1 to a nu i dash is the reaction is the reaction molecularity. So, once again uh, if H plus O2 uh, so this is 1 this is 1. So, the summation over 1 plus 1 is equal to molecularity reaction molecularity is equal to 2. Okay. Reaction order, what is reaction order? Reaction order is the influence of concentration of I on the reaction rate. Okay. Now, for elementary reactions like this, the reaction order is essentially the respective molecularity of the reaction, but that is not, yeah, that is also sometimes important. The most important uh, uh, contribution of reaction order comes for global and semi global reactions, where the reaction orders represent the net effect of the molecularities of the individual elementary reactions. Okay. So, this is where the reaction order uh, is important. Now, next we go to Arrhenius law. So far you have seen that using the law of mass action we have written uh, uh, how our reaction rate how we can obtain a reaction rate which is essentially uh, proportional to the product of the concentrations of the reactions reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients or the stoichiometric constants in front of them right. Now, this proportionality constant of the reaction rate and this product of the species concentration raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, this proportionality constant is called the rate constant, reaction rate constant or reaction rate coefficient, we will call it reaction rate constant. Now, what does the reaction rate constant depend on? Okay. That is given by Arrhenius law. The reaction rate constant is given by this form in a differential form which says that d log of k t d t is equal to E a by r 0 t square. E a is called activation energy. It has a very very important significance in combustion and r 0 is of course, the universal gas constant. Okay. So, if we integrate on both sides after taking d t to r h s, what we see is that we can write k t which is the more general form as a frequency factor a okay, that is the constant of integration actually of this integration which comes times e to the power of minus E a by r 0 t. This is very very important okay. and you will 
uh, be uh, quite surprised to believe that in today's modern combustion research at least 50 percent of the activity at not 50 percent at least 30 percent of the research activity of many people of, of combustion kineticists goes into determining A and E A. Because you see that combustion involves hundreds and thousands of reactions okay. and each of these reactions each of these thousands and thousands of reactions that we see will have a rate constant okay. and those rate constant in each of these thousands and thousands of reactions will have one A and one E A. So, to utilize to, to know comprehensively about how the system is behaving in a if you want to solve this numerically you need to know A and D A okay. So, the reaction rate constant is of is of paramount importance in combustion. So, we need to develop a thorough understanding of this okay and the modified form actually A also depends on temperature in some cases and when then you can write it as A we can decompose A into a constant D and T to the power of alpha where alpha is a constant. So, now then we have three constants to have a comprehensive reaction mechanism of combustion we need to first know what are the species being formed, we need to know what are the reactions being formed or reactions being involved and then we need to know A or B alpha and D A. And you will see that this reaction mechanisms that is being developed which is a very important activity essentially list these three parameters B alpha and D A ok. So, as you see that we have now appreciated that the combustion of the kerosene that happens in a gas turbine engine ok that does not happen in one step. The vapor of course, kerosene combustion happens in a gas phase that is it uh, kerosene vapor is mixed with oxygen we and uh, with which has got nitrogen and then you, you provide a spark and then series of reactions hundreds and thousands of reactions are formed or happen and thousands and thousands of species are formed and each of these is governed by the law of mass action and law of mass action involves this rate constant kt and the rate constant kt as a given form given by the arrhenius law and where which, in which involves these constants b alpha and d a of course, one would like to experimentally determine this constants, but it is not possible because you see there involves thousands and thousands of reactions. How many will you determine experimentally? So, you need to determine this by using theory ok. What kind of theory? We will come to that and, uh, but before that we need to have a little bit uh, some more discussion about uh, activation energy ok, but this theory of determining this k is very important, but as you see that this is an E A which is one of the most important constants for a given reaction involved in combustion. This E A has a very strange behavior, it is E exponential raised to the power of minus E A by R t R 0 t ok. So, whenever something has got exponential you, you have to be very careful ok. So, we will come to this what is the consequence of this exponential nature, but what does this E A this activation energy physically represent? Physically it means it represents the minimum energy of the colliding molecules that they must possess for the action to be possible that is why it is called activation energy ok and the activation energy of a forward reaction plus the heat release is equal to the activation energy of the backward reaction. So, if this is, this is essentially a potential energy of the molecule, so in this potential energy 
in this potential energy y axis and in the reaction coordinate where this is your reactants which can be like H plus O2 and this is your product for the reaction OH plus O. Actually I will not um, give this example because this is uh, has uh, it is a different reaction actually. So, well, let us consider uh, any re reactants uh, which has got uh, which is an exothermic in nature. Okay. So, which starts with the with, with these reactants and which goes into goes into this uh, products. So, you see the reactants itself they have a potential energy which is the heat release during combustion. So, they are already energized okay. whereas, the products do not have this heat of uh, uh, this this uh, heat, uh, this heat of uh, combustion as such because it has been already released. So, the products are at a lower energy state. So, but the but you see the reactants does not go to the products directly because if it would have gone then you could not have utilized combustion for power generation. You keep hydrogen and oxygen in a mixture they will spontaneously burn does that happen? It does not happen like that. If you keep methane and oxygen in a, in a bottle it does not spontaneously react right. So, it has to cross if it would have spontaneously reacted then everything in this universe in this world would have been just carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So, you see the beauty of nature here. So, all these fuels have a large activation energy which must be crossed for this reactants to become products. Okay. So, you need to supply this activation energy in some form or the other all right. For Q c equal to 0 your activation energy the forward reaction is greater than the activation of the backward reaction. That means, that the forward reaction is preferred because while going back you have to cross a higher hill Okay, for going from here to here you have to cross a hill a potential energy barrier which is of this magnitude. For going from products to reactants you have to cross a potential energy barrier which is of this magnitude. So, of course, that is why this reaction is preferred this path is preferred. Okay. But that is the yes of course, when you have activation energy uh, you will see the other beauties of activation energy also that uh, that is uh, there are other things. But if the activation energy was not large everything would have spontaneously reacted which does not happen you need to provide a spark right uh, for the reactions to begin or you need to compress uh, you need to compress your uh, uh, compress your gases that is uh, your your uh, your fuel air mixture that is present in your diesel engine to a very high pressure where it spontaneously ignites because of the higher temperature and the higher pressure okay so that means you are crossing the activation energy okay this has got other significance. Now, you can write you see the the the, the unit of E a is calorie per mole or joule per mole. Okay. Now, so is the it is an e to the power of minus E a by R t of course, the exponent of an exponential cannot have a unit. So, of course, you can see as be sure that R 0 times t is also a unit is also has a uh, unit of uh, calorie per mole or joule per mole. So, then you can define a non dimensional number called Arrhenius number which is essentially E a by R 0 times T max. What is T max? T max can be considered to be the maximum temperature that is involved in a combustion reaction which can be as you know like something like the adiabatic flame temperature. It is very hard to cross the adiabatic flame temperature right which can be like say 2500 Kelvin 3000 Kelvin depending on how much oxygen you have or how much nitrogen you have. Okay. So, Arrhenius number is essentially the ratio of the activation temperature okay, which is nothing but this thing E a by R 0 is equal to your activation temperature divided by T max. Now, you can look into this function that is e to the power of minus T a by T divided by e to the power of minus T a by T max. Now, you see this guy is a constant in a given reaction okay, and we can write this as e to the power of min Arrhenius number times 1 minus T max by T and if you plot this as a function of T max by T if you plot this quantity this can be considered like a uh, like a part of the reaction rate normalized by a constant what you will find is that the nature of this reaction rate constant as a function of T by T max for different Arrhenius number. You see that when Arrhenius number is small 1 
it is a smoothly behavior. But as Arrhenius number increases, it becomes these gradients become steeper and steeper. Okay, and this non-zero, essentially this non-negligible e, this function, this this guy, this which is essentially a normalized reaction rate constant, is only becomes concentrated at higher t by t max values. Okay. Okay. So it means that reaction now happens only at very very high temperature or the reaction rate constant is active at very very high temperature whereas for small RNS number it was active at almost all temperature whereas for RNS number 50 it is only active when it is beyond 0.9. For combustion reactions RNS numbers is typically in this range 5 to 10. Okay. So, it means that in combustion reactions are characterized by by various temperature sensitive reactions. Okay. Now, if you take the example that if you consider this is the example of a homogeneous uh, uh, combustion reaction uh, that is there is no transport that is there is no uh, conduction or, or diffusion uh, combustion happen in homogeneous uh, reactor which is given by dci dt is equal to then minus b c you see where this comes from this comes from the law of mass action and the formula for kf when you substitute everything this comes from the law of mass action this and this comes from the definition of kf okay and when you write when you plot this as a function of a time or distance you will find that for large arrhenius number the reaction rate becomes a very sharp peaked function like this okay so for a long time there is no activity and then when it crosses uh, then when it crosses certain temperature activity picks up and it com becomes completed in a very short amount of time because of reaction dilution it does not monotonically go up because your then c also decreases uh, as the reaction is consumed so this is the hallmark of combustion reactions that is they happen within a very short time or within a very short distance. Okay. Short time if you are considering a homogeneous reactor it uh, is that is why we almost call it like explosion okay. it is called thermal ray. Now, it is not explosion in this course does not mean a blast or something it means a very sh quick reactions with very large release of energy okay. and uh, combustion reactions uh, in a homogeneous reactor are uh, characterized by uh, are characterized by uh, this uh, explosive nature uh, where they happen within a very short amount of time and they are confined within small distances which are characterized by flames so flames are very thin in nature and that is because of the fact that arrhenius number is large in these reactions okay so uh, uh, the next uh, we will go into collision theory of reaction rate, uh, but uh, that is this much for this class. Thank you.